Hello and welcome back and I'm here with a very interesting article for you and this is for my Sussex supporters. So, courtesy of the cut.com, they sat down with an interview with the Duchess of Sussex and this is what the article says. The conditions are right for confession. It's a beautiful August day in Montecito in a beautiful sitting room in a beautiful home. Archie Harrison Mountbatten Windsor, a lively three-year-old with a shock of ginger curls identical to his father's, toddles into the room demanding, quote, Mama, listen to his heartbeat with a wooden toy, stethoscope. He stands, tummy protruding, while his mother, Megan, convincingly performs her glee at hearing the thump, thump, thump in his chest. Archie giggles and satisfied toddles right back out again. Megan, relaxing in a cozy chair, gazes over all that is climate-controlled and high-ceilinged and sun-dappled and perfectly marshmallowy and hers. An invisible hand has lit a Soho house branded rose water candle. The founder, Nick Jones, is a friend from, quote, long before I met Harry, she says. And that scent fills the air, mingling with the gentle tones of flamenco-infected guitar floating from a speaker. Then, in a lull in conversation, Megan leans to me and leans forward to ask, in a conspiratorial hush, quote, Do you want to know a secret? End quote. Megan, silenced no more, looks around, making sure nobody who would be is listening in. The top secret drop. Quote, Megan says, I'm getting back on Instagram. End quote. She says in her eyes alight, this could have been a troll. Delivering a nothing with such gravitas feels as if Megan, who had been so trolled by the media, is serving it back just a little. But as I realize quickly, it's actually news. Before this chapter in her life, before everything difficult that had spun off from marrying the Duke of Sussex and along with him the British monarchy, she was just Meghan Markle, a woman with a plum roll on a USA procedural and moderately popular lifestyle blog, The Tig. As herself, she amassed 3 million Instagram followers by sharing snippets of a basic life. Food she liked, hikes with her friends, her beagle guy, and fans watched as she attended events with her Suits castmates and charity galas, nights out at the Soho House in London and Toronto. She ran that account for years before she met Harry, but on the heels of their engagement, control over her Instagram was just one of the things, along with the TIG, her passport, and freedom to open her own mail, she gave up. She loved sharing her life with people, she says, but she loved Harry more. Quote, it was a big adjustment, a huge adjustment to go from that kind of autonomy to a different life, end quote, says Megan. Megan was permitted to join Harry, Kate, and Will on a pre-existing account, Kensington Royal, that she had no control over. Quote, there's literally a structure by which, if you want to release photos of your child as a member of the family, you first have to give them to the Royal Rota. The UK media pool, she explains. Usually, the photos would be on media outlets before she could post them herself. That didn't sit right with Meghan, given her strained relationship with the British tabloids. Harry's girl is almost straight out of Compton. In quotes, is how the Daily Mail introduced her to the British public, and especially since she would soon have a child of her own to protect. Quote, Why would I give the very people that are calling my children the N-word a photo of my child before I can share it with the people that love my child? End quote, she asks, still ruffled. Quote, you tell me how that makes sense and then I'll play the game. End quote. In April 2019, one month before Archie was born, Meghan and Harry launched their own Instagram handle, Sussex Royal, which reached 1 million followers within six hours. On their own account, they refused to play the quote, exchange game. They broke their own news, posting photos that sometimes never even made it to the Royal Rota. Shortly after that, they officially stepped back from their royal duties. They shut down at Sussex Royal. They could no longer use royal in their branding. Later in an interview with Fortune, Meghan declared that she wasn't planning on getting back on social media. The constant bullying had been too much. So this divulgence, in addition to being newsworthy, is a symbol of progress, proof that she and Harry have made it to the other side of all the drama that defined their past three years. Megan says, especially now with archetypes coming out, 
steering the conversation towards the reason she agreed to sit for an interview in the first place. Archetypes, the podcast Megan hosts, is the first much anticipated offering to come from the pair of the high profile deals the couple signed in 2020 with Netflix and Spotify. Each episode features her in conversation with her famous friends, discussing the ways women are unfairly labeled. An experience Megan notes she has through herself and is finally ready to talk about. Progress, however, is a series of steps forward and leaps backward. Later, Megan would relay she was no longer sure she would actually return to Instagram. Though she has been media trained and then royal media trained and sometimes converses like she has a tiny bachelor producer in her brain directing what she says, at one point in our conversation, instead of answering a question, she will suggest how I might transcribe the noises she's making. She's making these guttural sounds and I can't quite articulate what she is feeling in that moment because she has no word for it. She's just moaning. At the stage post-royal, there is no need for her to hold back. She's flinging open the proverbial doors to her life as any millennial woman whose feminism was forged in the girl boss era would understand. She's taken a hardship and turned it into content. So the article goes on to talk about Meghan's journey from deal or no deal, suitcase girl to princess and it had the makings of a fairy tale or at the very least a stellar romantic comedy. But it took almost no time to turn it into an extraction plot from a mid-90s political thriller. The seemingly storybook wedding in 2018 was followed by a year of clandestine conversations with the 1,200-year-old institution dubbed The Firm, during which the couple asked for help in relieving Meghan's declining mental health. When those talks went nowhere, there were even more clandestine conversations with a network of rich and powerful friends that led to an escape to Vancouver Island for a six-week holiday that turned into something far more permanent. It was from there the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Harry and Meghan, made a surprise announcement that they would be stepping back from their roles as senior members of the royal family in an Instagram post so full of hidden context and meaning that the MI6 could use it for message decoding training. Their accepted exit terms, or quote Megxit, to use the term the papers favored even though Harry declared it misogynistic, stipulated that the couple would no longer make appearances on behalf of the Queen, would no longer be permitted to use the HRH designation, and would make their own money, though Prince Charles provided some financial assistance for the first year. They were left sans public funding to bankroll both their lives and the security that protected those lives and the press had just leaked the location of the coastal home they were staying in. By March 2020, the pandemic was underway and there was talk of the Canadian-US border closing. They could see men on boats watching them from the water. Though Meghan had never met Tyler Perry in person, he had reached out when she and Harry got married to tell her that he was praying for her and, quote, that he understood what this meant, end quote. Meghan recalls referring to the symbolic weight of their wedding, quote, and that he could only imagine what it was like, end quote. He also told Meghan to call if she ever needed support or advice, and it took her a long time to do so, she admits. But once she did, she found herself telling him every detail of their situation in Canada. Quote, sometimes you can tell your life story to a stranger on a plane as opposed to some of the people that are closest to you, end quote, Meghan says. And in a plot twist I may never get over, Perry offered her one of his homes, a literal safe house in Beverly Hills, complete with security detail and became, in many ways, the reason that Harry and Meghan started their new life in Southern California. But she already covered all of this in the interview for Oprah. She reminds me with a firm smile and a wave of her hand that signals it's time to move on. In March 2021, a year after they left for America, Harry and Meghan put rumors about their exit to rest. They took part in an interview special with their neighbor and collaborator, Oprah, that attracted 17 million viewers. Over the course of the 85-minute special, she dropped bombshells, baby, about Charles not taking Harry's phone calls, about palace conversations where a still unnamed someone skvetched over how dark Archie's skin would be. She clarified it was Kate Middleton who made her cry over the flower girl dresses, not vice versa, and the tabloids had previously, as the tabloids previously reported. Bombshells and the firm leaks and relocations, racism against babies, 
This was definitely not a fairy tale, but revealing all of it was their way of setting fire to a narrative that they didn't control and letting a new one emerge. The article states, My first glimpse of Megan in this new chapter is her crouched in the entryway, arms wrapped around her black lab, Pula, Setswana for rain and good fortune, and a tribute to her early date during the couple's whirlwind romance in 2016. The front doors are thrown wide open and the doors leading out to the backyard. She stands and smiles with a perfect level of warmth, the gleam of her teeth rivaled only by the shininess of her blowout. Backlit by the late morning light in a scene that looks like a Nancy Myers cinematic interior, town and country goop, and architectural digest, created the perfect moment in a California living. She throws her arms wide open to and gives me a hug. Come on through, she says, beckoning me to join her on one of the many terraces. Okay, the author of this interview goes on to talk more about the house and how it's beautiful. And it calls it the home equivalent of a billionaire's dressing down in denim. <laughs> what an interesting quote. But she says this, Finding a house to start their new life wasn't easy, Megan says. Quote, We were looking in this area, she said, referring to Montecito, the Tony Beach side hamlet north of Los Angeles. And, she went on to say, this house kept popping up online in searches. At first, they'd resisted going to visit. We didn't have jobs, so we weren't just going to come and see this house. It wasn't possible. It's just like when I was younger. You're window shopping, and it's like I don't want to go and look at all the things that I can't afford. That doesn't feel good. She went on to say how they fell in love with the house. Quote, Megan says, One of the first things my husband saw when we walked around the house was those two palm trees, she said. See how they are connected at the bottom? He goes, my love, it's us, end quote. And now every day when Archie goes by us, he says, hi, mama and papa. <laughs> they had toured only the grounds when they told the real estate agent, we have to get this house. It didn't matter that they hadn't seen the inside. Megan gestures to the sweep of the property from the chicken coop to the pool house to the main house. Eventually, they purchased it for $14.65 million. We did everything to get this house, she says. So Megan went on to talk about her own life. She says even if she and Harry had stepped back from their royal duties, Megan is still very aware that people see her as a princess. Quote, It's important to be thoughtful about it because even with the Oprah interview, I was conscious of the fact that there are little girls that I meet and they're just like, quote, Oh my God, it's a real life princess, end quote. But her ambition for herself and the little girls who look up to her are more than to marry into a position. Quote, I just look at all of them and think, you have have the power within you to create a life greater than any fairy tale you've ever read. I don't mean that in terms of, quote, you could marry a prince one day, end quote. I mean, you can find love, you can find happiness, you can be up against what feels like the greatest obstacle, and then you can find happiness again, end quote. And the author of this article talks a bit about meeting Prince Harry. And she says that he appeared in navy blue athletic shorts, a t-shirt, and no shoes. And she didn't know whether to bow, curtsy, or salute. Do I call him Prince Harry, she said? She didn't know what to call him. But as if to preempt any attempts she might make at curtsying, Prince Harry extended out his hands, gave them a handshake, and is welcoming to their home. So he talks about fixing things, the pipes, and he says it's a whole story in himself. The day before, the article goes on to say, while Meghan was on the photo shoot for this issue, Prince Harry had been left to his own devices. He tells me, the author says, quote, you were gone for like 10 hours yesterday. He marvels to his wife, quote, tell her the first thing you said when you got back last night, he said, turning to me, quote, she said, I'm not a model, quote. I was like, no, you are. Of course, you can be a model. And she's like, I'm a mom. And it's like, quote, you can be both, Prince Harry said, earning himself so many points, according to the author. So the article goes on to talk about their deal with um, Spotify as well as Netflix. And they say that Prince Harry as well has his own work in Africa on behalf of the charity African Parks and goes on to talk about how Megan right now is launching Archetypes, which aired its first episode on Spotify on August the 23rd. There's another trip in the works on which they'll both speak. They'll both speak at a handful of charity events in the UK and Germany, including one for the lead-up to the Invictus Games, the athletic tournament for wounded veterans that Prince Harry founded in 2014. After all the drama, it looks like they've designed the exact job they wanted to have as royals but were denied, the article says. Well, it's like a startup, 
Megan says, quote, we were building a business during lockdown. And then Harry interjects, quote, with everyone weighing in, if you do something, they'll criticize you. If you don't do anything, they'll criticize you anyway. It's a lot, but he trails off. Oh, then having a baby in the middle of it all. Casually, Megan jokes, their daughter, Lily Bett, was born in June 2021. And the article says that during the pandemic, when everyone was isolated, they were creating a new thing together. Megan launched into a little story right now talking about Archie. They were talking about his manners. Quote, we always tell him, manners make the man. Manners, 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 manners. In one of those lessons, Megan remembered something she'd learned at a young age from her friend's mom. Salt and pepper are always good together. Quote, she said, you will never move one without the other. That's me and Harry. We're like salt and pepper. We always move together, end quote. These days, they are getting back out there together. Recently, Megan says they took Archie to a birthday party for a classmate. Everyone was surprised they showed up. Quote, I was in a bouncy castle and I saw this one-year-old inside. I was like, where's your mom? And this mom on the outside goes, oh, hi, I'm here. I wasn't sure if I should come in, end quote. She laughs, quote, I was like, do you need your child? Of course you can come in, end quote. So that's Megan there talking about her adjusting to her life and people adjusting to the way they, you know, they interact with her as a duchess, as a princess. And also talks about Prince Harry playing polo with Los Padres in Santa Barbara. They spend time with a close-knit group of friends who have lunch and dinner at one another's homes. The article also goes on to talk about their time going back for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee and Meghan talks about going back to their cottage and she says that so many things were right where they left them, um, leaving an imprint on what she was doing when you know they left the things there, so it's quite interesting. Um, she said something about some gold IKEA frames, um, a past message from a single self she hadn't fully wanted to leave behind. She talks about that. That's very cute as well. And they talk about the home renovations for their cottage in the UK that had been a sore point for the couple and for the British tabloids. They'd been criticized for using an exorbitant amount of taxpayer funds, 2.4 million pounds, or that's $3.2 million for the upgrade on a home they had been given. So the article goes that headline after headline suggested that the renovations were more extravagant than they actually were. For example, there never was a yoga studio with a floating floor, never a gold bathtub or copper bathtub. There wasn't a special wing for her mother. But the article says they've since repaid the renovation costs. It's bittersweet, you know, knowing none of it had to be this way, Megan said. How did it get so hard? She had tried to play royal. I was an actress, she said. My entire job was, quote, tell me where to stand, tell me what to say, tell me how to say it, tell me what to wear, and I'll do it. And I'll show up early, and I'll probably bake something for the crew, end quote. Every movie about an American woman who ends up becoming a princess has a pivotal scene in when she thinks she's doing the job correctly just by being herself, but then some older royal gives her a speech about duty and decorum. I cite specifically the prince in me. She hasn't seen it. Quote, yeah, that would have really been helpful. That would have been a very key tutorial I had to have in advance of all this. And quote, Megan says, not quite sarcastically, but the delivery is a sentence with a steel rod in it. By her own analysis, her problems stem from her being an American, not necessarily a black American, she explains. Her desire to ask a lot of questions and never to be involved with something she couldn't totally have her hands on seemed to violate an unspoken social norm. Oh, that's an interesting point. And the article goes on to say that the reporting of their renovations was just part of the abusive press coverage, the sort of headlines that quote allegedly true news items that led to the decline of her mental health. The couple figured if the tabloids felt free to attack them, quote, under the guise of public interest, because their lives were taxpayer funded, then they should just remove taxpayer funding from the equation, she explains. So that's why they asked to step back from their senior royal roles and make their own money. She thought that the noise would stop, Megan says, of their reasoning. They also thought it best to leave the UK and the UK press to do it. They were willing to go to basically any Commonwealth country, anywhere. They named Canada, New Zealand, South Africa, anywhere. Quote, anything to just, because just by existing, we were upsetting the dynamic of the hierarchy. So we go, okay, fine, let's get out of here, happy to, end quote. She says, putting her hands up in a mock defeat. Megan asserts that what they were asking for wasn't, quote, reinventing the wheel, end quote. 
and lists a handful of princes and princesses and dukes who have the very arrangement they wanted, but quote, that for whatever reason, it's not something that we were allowed to do, even though several other members of the family do it the exact thing, end quote. Why do you think that is? The author asks, why do you think that is? She says right back with a side eye that suggests I should understand without having to be told. All right, Megan, I'll bite. It could be that very reason she was considered a breath of fresh air at first and then a supernova, biracial, divorcee, self-made, millionaire, clothes horse, end quote, only highlighted the ways in which the monarchy was becoming irrelevant to a younger generation and worse, the ways that it was deeply flawed and racist. To that, it could just be because she's black or perhaps it's owed to the fact that Megan, who jokes that even, quote, even my blood type is A positive, end quote, wouldn't relinquish control over her own image and that image had the potential to be too big of a brand. The article goes on to say that she has desires and goals and a fan base and while she was a fine actress, the job she is best at is envisioning a life for herself and getting it. That specific type of American ambition just isn't really compatible with being a princess. It also talks about her battle with the tabloids becoming too eerily reminiscent of Princess Diana to Prince Harry. That's why he fought on her behalf. The author says, well, I can't put words in your mouth, the author says. Then a pause as she looks down and inspects her hands, deliberating how much should be said. I don't know, in quotes, she says, casting a knowing gaze out into the middle distance. The article also talks a bit about her dad and the relationship breakdown. It talks about a few other things. It's quite a long article and I would encourage you to go and read the cut to get the full story. It's so good. And it keeps on with the anecdotes about her interactions with Archie. And then the article goes on to say this. Earlier in our conversation about her goals for the life she's creating in the US, she remarked upon how if Archie was in school in the UK, she'd never be able to do school pick up or drop off without it becoming a royal photo call with a press pen of about 40 people snapping pictures. Sorry, I have a problem with that. That doesn't make me obsessed with privacy. That makes me a strong and good parent protecting my child." End quote. Megan says, for now, even though two Montecito moms waiting in front of the school stopped mid-chat to do a double take, Archie is just the cheerful kid who brings a week's worth of fresh picked fruit for his fellow classmates and enjoys playing a roaring game at recess. We ended the visit in her sitting room where there's a massive grand piano that Tyler Perry gifted her as a housewarming present with a soundtrack for your life, he told them in quotes. It's interesting, I've never had to sign anything that restricts me from talking, she reveals, but and she ushers me towards the door. Quote, I can talk about my whole experience and make a choice not to. Why doesn't she talk? Still healing, quote, she responds. I wonder given all she's put behind her now, she thinks there's room for forgiveness between her and her royal in-laws and, and her own family. Quote, I think forgiveness is really important. It takes a lot more energy not to forgive. End quote, Megan says wisely. Continuing on to say, quote, but it takes a lot of effort to forgive. I've really made an active effort, especially knowing that I can say anything, end quote. She says, her voice full of meaning, and then she's silent. She breathes in, smiles, and breathes out and says, quote, I have a lot to say until I don't. Do you like that? Sometimes, as they say, the silent part is still part of the song, end quote. And then quickly and decisively, as it were my idea, the conversation ends. Megan sets a harvest basket in my arms, a cornucopia of fruit and vegetables from their garden, and a jar of jam from the lily bunny garden plus larder. She had the labels made on Etsy. She smiled and waves as I make my way out the door, wondering if somehow I'd missed everything she was trying to say. And the article ends. So this is courtesy of thecut.com. What a fantastic article. And I'd encourage you all to go and read the full article. It's quite a read. And these are the highlights that stood out. And you can see it's still quite a long video here on YouTube. So I'm glad to share this with you. Now share your thoughts on these highlights in the comment section. How wonderful to see Megan has her voice back and she's able to share a lot of her experiences without self-editing. It's so wonderful. She can speak out. And something that stood out to me right here is about her talking about forgiveness and that she's made an active effort. And it's wonderful to see that relationship between, you know, the family and the love that they have and how Prince Harry has just been so supportive to his wife. And you can see it in how Prince Harry, he 
step back his family, as he said, and that was in direct opposition to the term splashed across a lot of newspapers, Megxit. Another thing that stood out to me is how Megan, you know, it was really emotional to me to hear her talk about it didn't have to be that way. And her reluctance to, I think actually I'll call it her graciousness, so gracious in being held back in simply saying that a major factor, if we truly think about it on why the press basically, the tabloid press to be more specific, and certain sections hounded them out of the UK was because, we all know it, Megan, as she said, her brand is just too big, but the most important point of that that underlies that is the fact that even commentators, royal commentators have pointed out that some people did not like the levels of popularity that the Sussexes had, Meghan in particular being compared to Princess Diana being called a new people's princess. And as a royal commentator said, I'll be gracious and say his words that some people felt they had to knock them down a peg. So that's just it. And I, I commend Megan on being so gracious on that. She did not gloat about it, the fact that she has such global appeal. And I, I just commend her for that. And by the way, can I just talk about how Megan looks so beautiful, especially look at this picture. Let's start off with the cover image. Her skin, her complexion is just fabulous. And the one where she's sitting on this bench, on this rustic bench outside, um, once again, her complexion is so lovely. Something that is so regal yet so simple about everything. And I just love it. Um, there's just such a natural beauty that comes through and you know she's coming through it's not the makeup um it's just megan her complexion and i just love it so much so share your thoughts with me on your standouts in this piece in the comment section below before we log off a special thank you to those who support my channel to my patreon paypal and membership supporters i want to say thank you and i want to give a special shout out right now to the supporters of this channel Thank you to Diana and Sean. Thank you for your support for my videos. I appreciate you so very much. And thank you right now to you, Anna Thorne. I appreciate you and love you. And thank you so much for leaving your comments. And a special thank you right now to you, Kristen Rowe. I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. And thank you to you, Bonnie Palmer, for your support as well for my channel. Once again, thank you to all who like, comment, and share. I appreciate you. If you enjoyed this video, let the algorithm know by hitting that thumbs up button and sharing. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day, and I will catch you in the next one. Have a blessed one.